Hello, this is Christian at Quarterlight Pictures for A Scripts and A Plugins. Welcome to this introductory demo of QP Proxyman, a fully featured proxy management panel for After Effects. Over the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to show you how to install the script and take you through the user interface, describing each function in detail. But first, a quick refresher on proxies in After Effects and why you should be using them. Traditionally, a proxy is a person authorised to act for another, or an official stand-in. In After Effects and other compositing programmes, a proxy is usually a locally stored, lower resolution or lighter version of one of your footage items, which stands in for the master item while you work, with a single goal of making you work faster. Proxies have been part of After Effects since version 2, way back in 1994. Back then, even working with standard definition footage could be time consuming. These days, when you're pulling 4, 5 or even 6K raw footage from network attached storage, using proxies can dramatically accelerate your workflow. How dramatically? Compare this HD footage. At the top, RAM previewing from a network drive, compared to the half res proxy RAM previewing from my local solid state drive. In this case, a 4 times difference in speed. So, if proxies already exist in After Effects, why do you need QP Proxy Man? Well, Creating proxies is actually quite simple, but requires a few manual steps including browsing for the render location and of course a long wait while your proxies render, which isn't the best start to a project if you're proxying multiple sources. QP Proxy Man can reduce this to a single click for as many pieces of footage as you like, best of all letting you work while your proxies render in the background, automatically setting them when they're done. Zero time wasted. What's more, you can automatically create proxies as you import your footage essentially turning creating proxies into a zero-click experience. So, let's take a look at QP Proxyman, starting with installation. QP Proxyman is a dockable panel, which is designed to work with After Effects CS6 and above. Yes, another panel to add to your ever-growing collection. To install, unzip the downloaded zip file and copy the QP Proxyman JSX bin file into your ScriptUI panels folder within your After Effects install directory. I'm putting these locations on screen for both Mac and Windows users. In After Effects, to open QP Proxyman, go to the window menu and select QP Proxyman.jsx bin from the list of installed script panels at the bottom of the menu. Here I'm using a clean install of After Effects CC 2014. The script does a number of checks before running, including checking the preference that lets scripts write files and access the network. If this isn't turned on, as is the case here, you're taken directly to After Effects' preferences to do so before continuing. I'll just turn that on and save my preferences. Next, you're asked to input your license code, which will have been emailed to you after your purchase. If you'd like to evaluate QP Proxyman before buying, you can enter the word trial into this box. I'm just going to paste my license code and click OK. If this is the first time you've used QP Proxyman, the welcome screen is shown, which contains a quick guide to the user interface. I'm going to quickly skip past this and stop on the first of two setup steps. So you can render proxies with a single click, QP Proxyman needs to know in advance where to render them. Click on the browse button to choose a folder, which we'll call the proxy cache from here on in. Ideally, this should be on a locally attached drive. A fast disk, like an SSD, is best. I'll just choose a folder on my main hard drive and click OK. QP Proxyman also lets you quickly choose how your proxies will be rendered using proxy render presets. I'll be talking about these in more detail later, but for now all you need to know is that they're preset combinations of render settings and output modules used to set the quality and file type for rendering. QP Proxyman ships with a number of these presets which you can install here. Most of these presets use custom render settings and output module templates designed for QP Proxyman which are also installed at this point. If you'd rather not install these that's ok as you can create your own proxy render presets at any time from the panel. I'm going to install these now and that's QP Proxyman set up. We're ready to start creating proxies. Next up we'll take a quick look at the panel before delving into the features. The panel can be docked anywhere on the screen, or left floating like this. I like to put it here, just above the project panel. There are three parts of the QP Proxyman panel. The toolbar, where you'll access the various functions for creating, setting and removing proxies from your project, 
This drop-down list where you can choose which proxy render preset will be used for rendering and also buttons to edit and create new presets. And the quick set panel which shows all the proxies in your project and lets you quickly turn them on or off. This panel can be torn off, redocked or hidden like this. All of QP Proxyman's settings can be found in the Preferences dialog. Click this button to open it. Full descriptions of each of these settings can be found in the provided Help dialog. But here are a few highlights. At the top here are the preferences for rendering your proxies. The proxy cache location, which you set up on install, can be set or changed here. Here you can choose whether to render proxies in the background or directly in After Effects. You can view all the proxies in your cache and delete old ones you no longer need by clicking on the Manage Proxy Cache button. If you decided not to install the proxy render presets earlier, you can click here to install them anytime. The proxy import settings tell QP Proxyman how to import image sequences and handle alpha channels. All proxy render presets give the option to render text burn-ins to your proxies. You can set which information is burnt in here. The help dialog can also be accessed from the main toolbar for information on any of the features in QP Proxyman. OK, let's create a proxy. The buttons used to create new proxies are green. Proxies can either be moving or still, that is, rendered in a moving format such as QuickTime or an image sequence or as a single still image. This switch sets the render mode. By default it is set to moving. Switching between moving and still mode changes the available proxy render presets. Obviously still render presets should use an appropriate still output module such as JPEG, Photoshop or TIFF. Moving render presets can use any kind of output module which supports moving images including QuickTime, PNG or EXR sequence. I'm just going to add a new render preset quickly here to show you the process. I want to add an open EXR sequence proxy for VFX work, so I call it EXR proxy and add a brief description. This is optional but can be useful for other users. This will be a half resolution proxy, so I'll choose QPPM half resolution proxy from the render settings drop down. Now, there's no open EXR sequence option in the list of output modules, but that's easily remedied. If you choose Open Output Module Templates from the drop-down, After Effects' own Output Module Template dialog is displayed. Let's click New, choose Open EXR Sequence, and change to RGB plus Alpha, and then click OK. Back here, give the new Output Module a name, Open EXR Sequence, and click OK. Back in the Render Presets dialog, we can now choose our new Output Module, because this is an image sequence, it's suitable for both moving and still proxies, so I'll check both boxes. I don't want any information burnt in, so I'll leave that unchecked. Finally, I can choose a tag colour to make it more recognisable in the list. This indigo tag looks good. Click Save to save the preset and exit the dialog. Back in the main panel, the new preset is listed when both moving and still modes are selected. QP Proxyman was initially conceived as a way of performing an automatic conform when footage was imported, kind of like how Avid works, converting imported footage into MXF files for real-time playback. This is still the core functionality of QP Proxyman. The Import and Proxy button lets us choose some footage to import, which will be proxied automatically. First, I'll just make sure the render preset I want to use is selected, then click on the Import button. The first thing you'll notice is this brand new import dialog box, which has been written from scratch for QP Proxyman. Taking its inspiration from Nuke's file dialog, this version offers one huge advantage over the system file dialog, in that it displays image sequences as a single line rather than hundreds or thousands of files. There's also this favourite folder panel on the left, which you can use to keep your regularly used folders for quick navigation. Just click on the plus button here to add the current folder and assign a folder colour if you like to make it extra recognisable. I'm going to go ahead and choose these two pieces of DSLR footage, then click on Import. As we're rendering in the background, the After Effects project must be saved first, so let's quickly do that. A small flurry of activity as QP Proxyman sets up the render queue, then kicks off the background render process. 
The script always tidies up behind it, so there won't be any unwanted render comps left lying around in your project or render queue, which will happen if you create proxies manually. Also, because we are rendering in the background, we could start working immediately with our footage. I'll create a comp and start work. There we go. The proxy for this piece of footage is finished rendering and has been set silently while I was performing a colour correction. The second proxy won't be far behind. Whenever you see this little tick mark on the top right of a button, this means you can alt click or option click on a Mac for an alternative function. In the case of the import button, this allows you to replace a footage item and render its proxy. I've been given a different take of this shot, so I'll replace it like so, then work on it while its proxy renders. If you have a project set up with footage already imported, you can still quickly render proxies. In this case, I have this shot, which, because it's a lock-off, I'll choose the still render mode. I'm happy with the choice of render preset, so I'll just hit the render button. After a short delay, the footage has been set to the still proxy. It's not just footage that can have proxies. The render button can also be used to render proxies for compositions. This comp is a work in progress, but I'm waiting for the director to make a final decision on the ink element she likes for the shot. The comp is a bit slow, so I'm going to speed things up a bit by rendering a proxy. I want this to be a decent quality, full res proxy, so I'll make sure I'm in moving mode, then choose HQ proxy from the render presets drop down and click render. With the proxy rendered and set, the underlying comp hasn't gone away, but you can see how much quicker it is to scrub. You won't see any changes you make in your original comp until you turn off the proxy or remove it from your project. The red remove button does just that, offering you the option of deleting the proxy from disk or just unlinking it from the project. Alt or option clicking this button lets you clear all proxies from the project with the same delete option. You can also choose to view the proxy cache management dialog for selective deletions. We can reuse existing rendered proxies by selecting a piece of footage or a comp in our project panel and clicking on the Cyan Set Proxy button. This brings up a very similar dialog box to the Manage Proxy dialog, but from here you can choose the proxy to use on your selected footage. Of course these proxies are all in our proxy cache, but you can also browse for proxies located elsewhere. One of my favourite features of QP Proximan is the placeholder proxy. If you've ever had to work with low resolution stand-ins, for example, your CG team might render half resolution works in progress, or you've downloaded comp videos from stock footage sites like Shutterstock, then this is the feature for you. Typically, you'd import the low res footage, add it to a comp, and work with a scaled up layer. The problem comes when you need to replace the temporary layer with the final version, which is a higher resolution. Suddenly, any scale keyframes need to be adjusted to cope with the increase in layer scale. Placeholder Proxy solves this problem without having to resort to pre-composing. I've got this comp video clip of an ink bleed that I downloaded from Shutterstock, which I'm going to use to wipe on my video layer. Eventually, I'll purchase the high definition clip, but first I need sign off from the director. I'm going to click on Placeholder Proxy, which brings up the File Input dialog, and choose my ink bleed preview clip. The Placeholder Options dialog is displayed, which lets me set the dimensions of the full resolution clip. There are some preset scales in this drop down, which should cover most eventualities, but if not, simply enter the dimensions here. As the shutterstock clips don't scale perfectly to HD, I'm just going to enter 1920 in the width box and click OK. QP Proximan creates a full size placeholder and applies our standing clip as its proxy. Now I can work with a placeholder as if it was my full resolution clip. The director has decided she prefers another ink bleed clip. QP Proximan lets us swap out the proxy really easily. If we select an existing placeholder proxy and click on the placeholder button, we can choose another clip that will replace the previous version. I'm going to do that, choose this clip and click on import. Now the comp uses the new clip for its transition. The director has signed off the transition, so now it's time to replace the proxy with the full resolution clip. I've bought the footage item from Shutterstock, so now with my placeholder selected, all I need to do is alt or option click on the placeholder proxy button to browse for the footage and click import. There we go, the placeholder has been replaced and the proxy removed automatically for us. If we look at our comp, we don't have to do anything to our ink layer except for some final colour correction tweaks. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you find QP Proximan useful in your After Effects pipeline. 
Please check out my other products at AE Scripts and AE Plugins and feel free to leave any comments or feature requests in the forums there. See you next time. Bye-bye.